In this tutorial in Cyberlink Power Director, we'd like to show you some tips on using a new special effect category called the body effect. It has some limitations and some quirks, but also some potential. We'd like to uncover that for you in this tutorial. It's available for subscribers of Power Director 365. The first thing that you need to know is that if you have a single isolated subject without extra stuff around it, that will give you the best results. Let's try this with several people. I'm going to take this clip and drag it into the track, and then we'll apply the effect. I go to my effects room. I can press the F4 function key. I'm going to select from the drop down at the top my category called body effect. This will open 30 separate options that I have. And you see as it previews each of the effects, what it does is it gives you an example of a very, very isolated subject. Now this is where it works best. Let's try it in this track with more than one subject. I'm going to drag it down and drop it. Now you cannot put this in a separate track. So I'm going to drop it on the track and you will see this progress. It will analyze my video. It will try to see if it can work and modify the area that, it, that the effect applies to. The documentation says your CPU needs to support AVX2 instruction set. Most of us don't know whether that happens or not. So my guess is if it doesn't work in your case, it might be your CPU. That's as technical as I'm going to get. But it will take a few moments to analyze the video content and then attempt to apply the effect to that content. I'll slide ahead to the end of the analysis and then we'll continue. My effect has been analyzed and we see that we have a decent outline here of the people. Let's play this and see how it applies. And there you have an effect on more than one. Now this is relatively tight compared to others. I've tried it where the people are farther away from the camera and it got part of the background as well. Let's look at this one of the 30 and see a little bit about it. So first of all, I'm going to click on the eye, the effect, and go to contour. That will give me the options I have here. In this case, I can only control the color and the size, the offset, and the opacity. Now the opacity is helpful because if I turn the opacity down to zero, the effect goes away. So I can, on a single clip, use the opacity value to keyframe this to turn it on and off basically in the same clip. Let's try that. I'm going to click on the keyframe button and then we'll go into our clip. It's set at 19 seconds. Let me just go 15 and zero frames and position my playhead there. And let's say we want it at basically the defaults. So we'll set our opacity value. It says it's 80. I'll leave it there and set a keyframe. And then I'm going to move back a frame by clicking on the left arrow with the bar and I'll turn the opacity down to zero. And then let's move to 16 seconds and 29 frames. And I'll set another opacity value. It was 80, where I'll set another keyframe. That's at 80. I'll go ahead of frame and I'll set it to zero. Now this should in effect turn it on and turn it off even though it's applied to the whole clip. Let's play it and see. There we are. It turns on and it turns off. Now some of these options do have the opacity value where you can adjust it like that. Others do not. Now here's something else about this. If, if I have one and I can't, don't have an opacity value and can't control it, here's what I need to do. I'll go back to that effect, the contour two, and I'll remove it. Now what I'm going to have to do in this case is I'll split the clip. Say I want to do it at 15 seconds and zero frames. And I'll do control T and split it. And maybe I want it to be in effect for say three seconds. I'll go three on the new clip and zero. S split it again, control T. And then I'll simply apply it to the middle clip of the three. So this is another way to do it if you can't control that, since you can't put the effect only on a different clip. So that's one way to modify that. Now there are 30 of them. You'll have to experiment with each of them and see what they do. Let's take a better option here. I'm going to 
close the window, go back to my resources. Let's take all these items off my timeline. And let's go to th this single one here. Now this one I've already done before, so it won't go through the process of analyzing the video. It'll be very quick. But let's apply another effect here. I'll go to All Content, and I want to go to my Body Effect subcategory. And let's take another one that's a little bit different here. Let's take the Motion Pulse. I'll take and drag it down and drop it on my track. And let's see what it looks like unmodified. Now you notice what it does here. It takes the person, but it also captures part of the rigging up which he's climbing. So it's a little bit imperfect. You can't modify the area it selects. Uh, so you have to go with a default. And on this one, let's look at a couple of options. I'll click on the Effect tab. Here I have a scale ratio. I have a clone content, a distance, a period, and I do have an opacity. So this one I might be able to turn on or off. I also have a direction. I can make it up and down. I can change the clone count, say, to 3. I can change the distance. I can tighten it up. And let's see what happens if I take those modifications and play it. And you see it's a little bit different. So you'll have to learn each of the different attributes that you can modify in this particular use of this effect. Now let me give you something else that you can do, I found. You can stack the effects. So let's say I like that effect, but I want more than one in this category. So I'm going to close this out, and let's take the magic swirl, drag that down, and now in this area I have two effects at the same time. So you can stack them. Again, to see which is operational, you click on the I in the lower left corner. And I can click on either of these to go to the controls for each of them. Here are the controls for the magic swirl. And I can go up to the first one, down to the second one. I can add a third one if I want and control each of them. I can also do keyframing in each of them separately. So that's a powerful tool if you like the effect. Uh, if you have a certain kind of setting where one of these 30 might be something that will help or give you the kind of emphasis you want in your video, they're useful for you. If you're a subscriber of PowerDirector 365 and want to use the body effect subcategory of FX now available to you in PowerDirector.